Welcome to the Delaware Public Archives first Saturday program uh, detailing the second Delaware service during the American Civil War. This is episode two of our series and during this episode we're going to cover Fredericksburg up through the winter of 1863 to 64. So the Fredericksburg campaign would start off in December of 1862 following the Battle of Antietam the Confederate forces would retreat back into Virginia with the Union pursuing. Newly appointed commander would be Ambrose Burnside of the Union forces, again against Robert E. Lee. And the campaign of Fredericksburg would begin on December 12th and last through the 15th. The second Delaware uh, would be engaged during this battle. They would be in the second corps under command of General E.V. Sumner of the first division who was commanded by General Winfield Scott Hancock and the 3rd Brigade under Colonel Samuel K. Zook. The 2nd Delaware would go into the battle with 19 commissioned officers and 225 enlisted men. They would go on to get within 60 yards of the stone wall at Marie's Heights. This map depicts the 2nd Delaware's movements up through the field attacking Marie's Heights the 2nd Delaware is under Colonel Zook's Brigade, and they are attacking along with the 32nd New York, 37th New York, 66th New York, 27th Connecticut, and the 53rd Pennsylvania. So an account uh, by Samuel K. Zook to E.I. Wade in December of 1862 following the battle. He would go on to state that, quote, I walked over the field close under the enemy's picket line last night about three o'clock. The ground was strewn thickly with corpse of the heroes who perished there on Saturday. I never realized before what war was. I never before felt so horribly since I was born. To see men dashed to pieces by shot and torn into shreds by shells during the heat and crash of battle is bad enough, God knows. But to walk alone among slaughtered brave in the still small hours of the night would make the bravest man living blue. God grant I may never have to repeat my last night's experience. The New York Times would go on to write in January of 1863, the regiment designated upon the army registered as the second Delaware, but more familiarly known among the veterans of the Army of the Potomac as the Crazy Delaware, was the first regiment raised in the state for three years or during the war. It has been prominent in the Grand Army of the Potomac. It was commanded by Colonel William P. Bailey, a cool, brave, and experienced officer who possesses the confidence and affection of his men and will never disappoint the hopes of his country. At the Battle of Gaines Mill, White Oak Swamp, Peach Orchard, Savage Station, all part of the Seven Days Campaign, Antietam and Fredericksburg, this gallant regiment, now reduced to about 250 effective men, fought with valor and self-sacrificing devotion that won the applause of the whole army. It was the last to leave the field at the bloody fight at Gaines's Mill, and at Fredericksburg it led the charge of Zook's brigade and laid its dead nearer the rebel works than any other regiment. So as I said, the Second Delaware would get extremely close to the, the stone wall in which the Confederates were positioned behind during the battle. In a letter by Cyrus Forwood of the Second Delaware would go on to state in December of 1862 to his father, Writing, quote, since last Thursday morning, Fredericksburg has been shelled. Our forces have been in possession and evacuated it. On Thursday morning, the shelling commenced. We had 148 pieces of artillery. Their fire was principally directed at the rebel batteries, which are on a range of hills one mile back from the town. The firing continued all day. At night, one brigade crossed to Fredericksburg and held the place until Friday morning when our division crossed. We were followed by the rest of our corps, and one or two corps more followed ours over. There was no a great deal of firing done near town. Our left wing under Franklin crossed when we did. I do not know whether they are still across or not. Report says they are, and that they have driven the rebels more than a mile. On Saturday morning, our brigade was detailed to go on picket. We went out near half a mile from the river. The rebel sharpshooters were keeping up a continual fire on us. They wounded two of our regiment, one belonging to Company D and the other to Company E. Though we did not remain long on picket, we were relieved and returned to town. About noon, our infantry commenced firing on the rebel lines and soon the battle raged with fury. 
Shell and solid shot and even musket balls from the level rebel lines were flying all through the town. About half past one, our brigade went into the lines. We had to carry our blankets or throw them away. The ground was muddy, and to make it worse, we were taken in at double quick march, which is basically running. Who is to blame for taking us in that way? I do not know, but one thing certain, we were complete, completed exhaust when we got to the front. We passed through one regiment, which had refused to go any further. Before we got quiet, quit, quite to the front, we found a high and close board fence before us. We halt, I halted to see where I could get through and heard the spent balls from the rebel infantry striking on the other side faster than one could count. While shell were bursting over me almost as fast, a little to the left, the fence turned and ran out toward the rebs. I went out along the fence directly. A missile struck the ground in front of me and scattered the dirt in my face. Soon after, a spent ball struck my elbow, which made it sore for a few days. I then got up to a small stable where I found a good many persons. I could not call them men, hiding themselves. Some would even bury their faces in the mud. So anxious were they to get out of the way. I was then on the left of the fence and most of the regiment on the right. I looked through a hole in the fence and saw Lieutenant Evans. I waited long enough to think that there were at least ten chances to one of my being killed, for, men, for dead men were laying thick and messengers of death were flying thick. But I crawled through and went out. When I got there, I could not find anybody to shoot at for some time. The men around me were loading and firing as rapidly as possible, but most of them did not know who they were firing at for the rebel infantry were protected and we could not see them. Only they could come up to the front and fire, then they would fall back again. Their batteries were protected by earthworks and poured an incessant fire into us. Our infantry could do nothing in such a place and yet regiment after regiment was sent in only to be slaughtered. Surely a heavy responsibility will rest on some of, someone for sacrificing so many lives on that fatal day. Our division went in over 5,000 strong and at night could only muster 1,900 men. The balance were killed, wounded, and missing. A good many of the latter will turn up yet, but not a few of them will be found to have been killed. The loss in our regiment was smaller than any other division. On Saturday evening, 60 were reported, but some of them came in afterward in Company A. Four men were reported missing, but three of them came in after. The other, John McCullen, was wounded and started back to town. Since then, we have not heard of him. John Rowe and Joseph were wounded, but not severely. Charlie Cotton was slightly bruised on the arm. He is still with the company. Colonel Bailey was slightly wounded in the breast. Major Ricketts, severely wounded. Captain Weenie, slightly in the arm. Lieutenant Reynolds, in the shoulder. They have all been sent home. Lieutenant Colonel Stricker went home on sick furlough five or six days ago, and so got clear of it. I will now close, give my love to all, and save a share for yourself. Your affectionate son, C.H. Forwood. End quote. So from that battle, the 2nd Delaware would receive seven officers wounded, 47 men killed, wounded, and missing, making 54 total casualties. Union losses would amount to 12,000. The winter of 1862 to 63, would, the 2nd would camp near Falmouth, Virginia, to recoup from the brutal defeat of Fredericksburg. After the winter encampment in 1862 to 63, the Second Delaware would then be engaged in the Chancellorsville campaign. The Chancellorsville campaign would last from April 27th to May 5th, 1863. The Second Delaware would again be in the Second Corps of the First Division and the Fourth Brigade. Colonel Brooke, during the battle, would write, I moved to the plain near the Chancellor House, where Chancellorsville gets its name, and formed a line between two batteries. Petites on my left and a brass battery on my right. Here we experienced the most destructive fire of artillery. Many officers being killed and wounded, but the presence of Generals Couch and Hancock seemed to add to the veteran bravery of the troops. None wavered. While lying in this position, the Chancellor House took fire. It was filled with wounded, and after strenuous exertions, the wounded were removed by a company of the 2nd Delaware. Lieutenant Wilson of General Hancock's staff, having charge of the party, it was in the execution of his duty that the veteran Captain McCullough was dangerously and the gallant Lieutenant Jordan, both of the 2nd Delaware, were mortally wounded. Major Patton of the 145th Pennsylvania was also dangerously wounded while occupying the position. Lieutenant Colonel David L. Stricker of the 2nd Delaware commanded the regiment at this time. The loss of the regiment at this point was one officer and one enlisted man killed, 
three officers and 16 enlisted men wounded, and two officers and 38 enlisted captured or missing, making the total casualties 61. Colonel R. Brook. So the 2nd Delaware, as Colonel Brook states, was stationed outside of the Chancellor House. They ended up retreating back along the line on the first day on May 1st, 1863, and again would, rece would receive a total of 61 killed, wounded, and missing. After the Confederate victory at Chancellorsville, Robert E. Lee would again become ambitious and plan to invade the North once more, sparking the Gettysburg Campaign, which would begin on June 11th and span until July 24th, 1863. So during the Gettysburg Campaign, the 2nd Delaware was in the 2nd Corps of the 1st Division, 4th Brigade, once more, and they would be engaged heavily on July 2nd, 1863, at the Battle of Gettysburg. On July 2nd, 1863, the battle was in full swing. Between the hours of 3.30 and 4, the 2nd Delaware would be forced to double quick to fill the line into the wheat field and Devil's Den. I would again encourage anybody who has not been to Gettysburg to go. It's extremely uh, well preserved. And again, you can go into the exact position that the 2nd Delaware was in on July 2nd. So the 2nd Delaware moved into position to fill a hole that was caused by Daniel Sickles, who had, to put it in short, moved his line further in front of the Union position, creating a gap. And so fighting around the wheat field in Devil's Den would become very fierce uh, due to his blunder. So Brooks' 4th Brigade would charge through the wheat field and woods beyond, now known as Rose Woods, pushing Anderson's Georgians back. So here is a photograph of the Rose Woods after the Battle of Gettysburg showing uh, Union and Confederate dead. This photograph is on the edge of Rose Woods. And this photograph shows Confederate dead, uh, again, outside of Rose's Woods. The regiment captured many prisoners and held the position until Anderson Georgians regrouped and conducted a counter-flanked attack, resulting in heavy casualties for Caldwell's division and the retreat of the 2nd and others in Brooks' brigade. They lost nearly half of the brigade uh, during the battle as well. On July 3rd, the 2nd Delaware would form a skirmish line along the Bryan Farm, which is close to Ziegler's Grove. Company A would be led by Captain John Evans, and during Pickett's charge, the company would end up capturing Confederate prisoners after seeing the rebels retreat from the charge that the Confederate forces attempted to make, but ultimately were defeated at. Many of the prisoners that the 2nd Delaware had captured were sent to Fort Delaware, which is located uh, in the Delaware River outside of Delaware City. The regiment would go on to lose two officers, nine enlisted killed, seven officers and 54 enlisted wounded, and 12 enlisted captured or missing for a total of 84 casualties. So again, this was a Confederate defeat, as was Antietam, and the Confederates would retreat back into Virginia, in the fall of 1863 would begin the Bristow Station Campaign, which would last from October 10th to the 22nd. The 2nd Delaware was again under command of Colonel John Brook, and the brigade was comprised of the 2nd Delaware, 64th New York, 53rd Pennsylvania, and the 145th Pennsylvania. At this point, the regiment was commanded by Captain Peter H. McCullough, as Stricker was wounded. General Jubal Early's troops in front of Brooks' brigade would be stationed. The 2nd Delaware would not see much fighting at the Battle of Bristow Station. However, they would receive one man wounded and one officer and 25 men missing or captured. The 2nd Delaware would get a total of 27 casualties and the total loss for the brigade was 115. Captain Peter McCullough's official report would state the enemy's batteries were briskly engaged in shelling our batteries in the woods when orders came for us to march to the left, double quick, deploy as skirmishers, and follow the column, which was in far advance. 
The rebels firing solid shot and shells at us with precision at the turn of the road. We fear that many were killed and wounded as many were there missing. In November of 1863, the Mine Run campaign would begin, which was a very small campaign between the Union and Confederate forces. It would last from November 26th to December 2nd, 1863, and was fought mainly between Ewell's Corps and French's Third Corps. The brigade consisted only of three regiments, the 2nd Delaware, 64th New York, and the 53rd Pennsylvania, and commanded by William P. Bailey. The second Delaware official report written by Bailey would go on to state the regiment broke camp at daylight on the 25th of November and marched with the brigade across the Rapidan at Germana Ford and the same night encamped at Flat Run. Moved to Robertson's Tavern where it encamped until the 28th instant when it moved toward the enemy taking position on the right of the brigade where it rem remains until the morning of the 29th instant and moved on the morning of the 30th. The same afternoon, received orders from Colonel Brooke, commanding of the brigade, to deploy as skirmishers and move toward the enemy, my right resting on the railroad, which I did under a brisk fire from the Rebel battery and sharpshooters. So during this campaign, the Second Delaware would only lose two men, wounded for a total of 13 casualties within the brigade. So after the Mine Run campaign, the armies would go into winter quarters during 1863 and 1864. The 2nd Delaware would camp in Stevensburg, Virginia from January to February 1864. And this photograph depicts what a winter quarters encampment would look like with log cabins in the background and tents as roofs. This concludes episode two of the Delaware Public Archives first Saturday program depicting the 2nd Delaware and their involvement. The next series, Series 3 is going to depict the Overland campaign um, to the present time.